Hello everyone. In this video we'll be going over what Kerberos is, how it works, and some of the key points you'll need to remember for those of you studying for the CISSP certification. Kerberos is described as a basis for network authentication protocols. Most implementations are much more complicated than what we'll show you here, but the purpose of this video is to just give you an overview, so let's get started. Kerberos has three components that we can visualize using a child who maybe wants ice cream, a parent who serves as the gatekeeper to the ice cream, Ice cream, and the freezer where the ice cream is kept. In mythology, Kerberos is a three-headed dog, but I figured the imagery presented here might help everyone to better visualize the process. Think of the user as the kid. The parent is the KDC, or the Key Distribution Center, or the gatekeeper, and the freezer is the destination server, or the resource that the kid wants access to. In this case, ice cream. Some key terms to be aware of are the user is what's called the principal. The KDC or key distribution center is the gatekeeper and has two components or services that it provides, the authentication service and the ticket granting service. The way it works is like this. The user or principal authenticates to the key distribution center or KDC providing its password. The authentication service then generates something called a ticket granting ticket, which is basically permission to get a different ticket to eventually get the ice cream or the destination server. The TGT or the ticket granting ticket is shared to the user and the ticket granting service. So the user then provides the TGT or the ticket granting ticket, that first ticket that he received, to the ticket granting service. The ticket granting service then compares that ticket provided by the user to the one provided by the authentication service. And if the two match, the TGS or ticket granting service generates something called a service ticket. The user then presents the ticket to the destination server, but it's encrypted with a secret or symmetrical key. Luckily, the ticket granting service pre-shared that key with the destination server. Once the destination server decrypts the ticket, it gets a copy from the TGS or the ticket granting service and compares the tickets. If they match, the authentication process was successful and the principal can enjoy his ice cream, so to speak. The next part of this video will focus on additional bits of information you'll need only if you're studying for the CISSP exam, but Feel free to stick around if you're also looking for more information on the topic. The first tidbit to know is that users and workstations are pre-registered in the key distribution center with a secret key. The secret key is typically a hash of the password, which will be changed when the user first authenticates and changes their password. The key is referred to as the unique user key or realm key. Something else you'll need to know is that the KDC or key distribution center uses network time protocol to ensure that the timing is synchronized. The reason this is done is because the initial ticket or the TGT ticket granting ticket needs to expire within five minutes to prevent replay attacks. The TGT itself, ticket granting ticket, does not provide access to the destination servers. The service tickets are what provide access to the destination servers, and those typically don't expire for eight to 10 hours, after which a user will have to re-authenticate to the KDC. When a user logs into a Kerberos security realm, the event ID is 4768. The principal or user doesn't have the secret keys that are used to encrypt tickets. Only the KDC and the destination server have them. Keys are stored in something called the curb tray, which is a non-pageable area of memory. Kerberos doesn't provide a method for secure data transfer. That would require something like IPsec. Key length consideration is important for Kerberos because you don't want keys that are too large because it will interfere with network performance, but you also don't want too short of keys due to the risk of brute force attacks. A specific drawback to Kerberos is its trust in user passwords. Passwords allow password guessing and password theft. And lastly, Kerberos, or the KDC, is a single point of failure. So the remedy to that would be to have multiple KDCs or key distribution centers in the architecture and to address it in your continuity and backup plans. That's it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and have a great day.